Welcome to cooking cheap, easy, and tasty meals. Now, homemade dumplings part two, we're gonna make chicken and dumplings. I've got the dumplings already made, so my next step would be to prepare the base to cook the dumplings and the chicken. Now, I'm, again, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna use pre-cooked chicken breast in a can from Sam's Club, just to keep them consistent using pre-cooked food. I could have cooked the chicken in advance, but I just figured I'd use that. It turns out that's the last can I have and I figure I ought to use it anyway. Put a little oil in. I'm gonna turn on the stove to about medium high. Then I'm gonna turn it back down once it gets to heat. It will have very similar ingredients to the bean soup I made, but this will have a chicken base. Okay, we're gonna start off by adding half an onion. Now that's a yellow onion, but it could be white, it could be red. Whichever kind of onion you like, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. <clears throat> but we're gonna start off with the onions cooking until they're beginning to brown a little bit on the edge. Maybe four or five minutes. Now this is definitely not the way my grandmother would have made it. My grandmother would have taken a whole chicken and she would have put it in a pot and cooked it for hours and hours at low temperatures. And then she would have stripped the meat out and then she would have taken what she was cooking, the bones and the skin and everything that was left over that she wasn't gonna using a meal and she would have cooked it down, added some vegetables and made chicken broth that she would have used in this meal and probably frozen it and using it in several meals while she was at it. I don't think it would have lasted that long because basically she cooked every day. Anything she had on hand in the refrigerator or the freezer would have been available and would have been used pretty quickly. And she did definitely went to the grocery store, but pretty much only for staples. My grandparents did raise a few chickens, but generally I remember beef and, and pigs and, and some grain, corn, things like that. I don't remember a whole lot of chickens, ducks, geese. I think my grandfather would go hunting occasionally for squirrels or something. He had eaten that growing up and had some particular things he liked about it, but he didn't do it very often. I don't think my grandmother really liked to cook squirrels, but I don't know that. I just had that feeling. And occasionally, somebody would bring some fish, but I don't remember him going fishing, although we lived right on the water. I think he was a farmer. So we ate a lot of beef and pork. And we definitely had corn when corn came in because they planted corn to feed the animals. Quite a different world. Okay, we're starting off with our onions. They're about ready. I'm gonna add carrots and celery. It's about one rib of celery and about one medium carrot. About the same amount as the onion, so match what you use in the way of onions. So we're going to let those cook for six or seven minutes and soften up. Okay, I'm going to add a little flour for thickening. I'm going to add about a tablespoon and a half. That's roughly a tablespoon and a half. Then we're going to stir it up in the flour. Got to stir it up in the vegetables, make sure they're all coated. All we're going to do is use it as a thickener. We want to cook a little bit so the flour won't have a raw taste to it. While we're doing that, we can go ahead and add in the garlic. These are three small cloves of garlic. By the way, this is a really nice mincer. It's the best one I've found. It 
found it on Amazon. It seems like half of them look like this. But it has a little removable cup. It really does a great job of mincing. Okay, let's stir that up. Now, I'm going to do something uh, again. I'm sure my grandmother wouldn't have done. I'm going to add some wine. This is a little Chardonnay. I'm going to put just a splash in there to help get the fond up. up into the dish and I'm going to add two cups of better than bouillon but I put enough better than bouillon for four cups because I'm going to add two, two cups of plain water to that. So we're basically getting four cups of chicken broth. And we're going to bring that up to a boil. I use better than bouillon because it's just easier to store and because I can keep it in the refrigerator for longer. When that comes to a boil, I'm going to cut it back down to simmer. I'm going to add our dumplings. I'm going to cook our dumplings for maybe 20 or 30 minutes until they're done. we we'll have to taste them and see. Okay, now, this is boiling now. So I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer. And I'm gonna add our dumplings, a few at a time, so they won't clump. Okay, now we're going to let these cook for a few minutes, then we'll add our chicken. While we're doing this, we're going to add a little pepper. A little salt. About a teaspoon of salt. Let that cook for about 10 minutes, then we add the chicken. Okay, I'm going to let this cook for about 30 minutes total to make sure that the dumplings are done. And then I'm going to add the chicken and we'll finish this up. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and add some frozen chopped spinach and let it finish cooking while we're in this process. A couple handfuls should be enough. Frozen spinach is a great option. If you get some frozen spinach, it's usually frozen right from the field, so it has vitamins and minerals, just like for fresh spinach. At least that's what everybody tells me. I don't know. I didn't measure it myself, but I trust it. Now we're gonna add the chicken. Again, it's canned chicken breast. Chop it up as I put it in there. It looks pretty good actually. I've used this before in other things and it, it actually cooks up well. I don't think you'd want to make anything fresh with it, like a chicken salad. I guess you could, but in cooked food, it really comes out all right. It adds the flavor and the texture. It's just a little weird in things like chicken salad. It really needs to be cooked. I don't know why. Just it just does. So there we've got that. Let that 
cook up in the, give it the chicken flavor, which we of course got from the chicken broth too. Come up to boil again, and then we'll cook it for about five more minutes up to a simmer. The dumplings are looking pretty good. So there we have it, chicken and rolled egg dumplings. It's a really hearty meal. It's warm and filling, and the homemade dumplings really add to it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and give us a like. Thank you.